they say you can't, you can't make a color based sound just with a VST synth. You can get pretty close to it. They tell you in order to get color based sounds, you're gonna need to have fancy plugins. You can't make it through a VST synth. You just can't do it. It doesn't work like that. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you some color-based wavetables. I got the idea from making wavetables myself. One of the features you can do is if you know how to do the math right and know how to play with the functions right, you can actually resample a synth, any sample whatsoever. And what I did is I took some FM sounds and put them right through pitch map and then ran it through the wavetable and processed it through Serum's wavetable editor. I'll tell you, it sounds super sick, man. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I did that some techniques as well on other types of wavetables down in a link down below there'll be a link to my patreon you don't have to subscribe in order to get this download but it also has downloads for it we're gonna have 50 wavetables and some presets to go down in serum a lot of them will be the pitch map color ones color based ones there's also some really cool basic ones that i have in there that i've been holding on to for a while waiting for a video like this now i've got online on youtube and try to look up tutorials on how to do wavetable editing, how to make your own, and I really could not find really good ones at all. It seems like people are just winging it most of the time, and it, I, I don't really appreciate it. It seems like they don't know the technical aspects or proper techniques, but it's not to their fault. Wavetable editing has only been around for like 30, 40 years or so. I'm not sure if wavetable editing is a technique that's really refined yet, but I hope that this video solves that issue. We're gonna go over a whole bunch of techniques that I kinda of went over. Um, if you guys have your own wavetable editing techniques, which I totally need to figure out, let me know in the comments. Let me know if you like this video. Give me a like, drop a comment, share it with a friend. Let's get ready to make some color base wavetables. All right, let's get into Serum. I wanna show you guys something. So, Whenever we want to do something on a wavetable, we can import them. It's really easy. Just go find some kind of bass or something. Let's do... I like this one right here. Let's get the heads of phones on. Okay, so... Doesn't sound like there's a pitch band, but... Here's what we could do. We could come over here. There's a whole bunch of stuff over here. I don't know why, but my screen won't show it, but... There's a whole bunch of them here. Alright, go into your wavetable editor. And you have these options right here. Dynamic pitch follow, basically if there's like a pitch bend or something. Pitch, dynamic pitch, zero snap. These are like two different pitch bends so it can... And then there's fixed frame size. This is the one that I've had best help with. So fixed frame size is going to try to figure out whichever one you have. And you can do that. But... Here's the thing. Here's the thing, the best thing to do is to go over here and it says in this sample right here, you see right here it says F. So let's just do F0 because F0 is the sub frequency. That's what it is right there. All right, so let's take that, let's put it in here. You see how these phases are moving from right to left? See what you have to understand is whenever you put a note here, this is for 44.1 kilohertz. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to ChatGPT. I have ChatGPT do all the math for me, and it tells me the exact size that I want. What about F0, 44 hertz at 48,000 sample rate? All right, so you see this? As I move over here, see how it's kind of staying there? Yeah, look at that. Not quite it, but look. When you get to a point where the bass comes in, it's not moving at all. And that's how you really want your tables. All right, so we're gonna try something. We only have about 48 tables in between each other, so you can use this more thing. And then we can uh, do spectral. This is going to be real cool, man. Um, so it takes the 46 frames that we have, and we're going to be able to... It, it um, computes up to 256. It 
seems to um, kind of jump. It sounds kind of rough. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to process these, normalize each. We're going to do something else is what I found that was really helpful. More spect spectral zero all phases. Bam. Let's see what happens. All right. Didn't really like that. Let's try something else. You go to process and shift horizontal crossing to zero. Uh, shift horizontal to zero crossings. So basically, it's gonna find the center of each um, each one. Let's see what happens. And these are really cool. You can go ahead and turn on the turn off the volume. I got from A. So that's how pretty much we can get this wavetable stuff kind of going. Yeah, that's basically how I do a wavetable. I think this sample method is the best. And you know what's really cool about it is if you have something like Melodyne. If you have something like Melodyne, you can actually put like a bass in there. You can actually like put bass in the Melodyne. And if there's a pitch shift, you can actually get rid of the pitch shift and then it'll all be aligned and then you don't have to worry about it too much because there is phasing issues. You really won't have to process anything too much. Kind of picking the sample size is where it's at. You know what I mean? Now the quick ones that are on here are, are really good. A lot of the times you can put something in there and it works, but whenever it comes to some advanced editing on here, you're going to have to really mess with that sample rate stuff. So let's find some cool stuff. Let's do one more that isn't so noisy. So if you go over here, right, let's put this up in here. Let's see what the sample rate is. It's 48. Let's go to chat GPT to do some math. <laughs> this is such a weird workflow, but it works. It works for me. This is what works for me. So if we're gonna do, let's do A, zero, enter. That's 55 Hertz. So let's go to chat GPT, 873. Let's do 873. Again, the math is wrong because it's waiting for you to do 44.1 kilohertz. That's what it's asking you for. But a lot of my samples are not 41.1 kilohertz. A lot of people are like, oh, what, what, what is it doing? Why is it like that? Well, that's why it's like that. Because it works off of 44.1 kilohertz. Oh, look at this. Oh my God. Here's the thing. So there's not like one up and down waveform on here. What that's telling me is that I need to go up. I think I, it probably wasn't A0, it was probably something else, but it does look like it's kind of meeting up with each other, look. All right, so let's try it again. Let's let's do another advanced thing over here. So we thought it was A, let's go over here. You click on the first one, hold shift, go to the other one. Process, resize tables to be double. Basically, you're just going an octave up. Oh, that was the wrong one. Wrong one. Resize tables to be half, there you go. Let's just try it again, and then we get that back button just in case. Yeah, I think I did too much. You know, it's a good way to check this. Is if I just put like a EQ8. There you go. There's a nice fundamental right there. All right, let's try. Zero all phases, let's see what happens. No, don't like that. It's just more spectral, let's see what happens. And then we're gonna normalize each, let's see what happens. All 
All right, so I didn't really like this, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna process, and then there's this thing called set phases this frame to all. Basically, it's gonna look at all the phases that I have on this one that I have selected, and then set phases this frame to all. So I'm gonna do that. There we go. Let's see what happens. There you go, that sounds really cool. That's one way to import wavetable samples, and I did that, okay? What I wound up doing is I, now here's the cool part. What I wound up doing is whenever I started practicing this, I started realizing that I could import them and I felt a little bit more comfortable and this is what I f did. I started messing with this. That's that FM sound. That's all it is. What I did is I went ahead and made this a two bar loop. Put it like this. Envelope. Put this here. Bam. And here's what I did. I picked a note which is C0. All the way down here. Bam, pick that note. Pick that two bars. Freeze and flatten. There we go. We gotta move this thing over here. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crop the clip. Bam, crop the clip. That's what's up. Now let's get to our pitch map. Here's what I wound up doing. You go over here, pick C, and I go pentatonic major. And there's this one that's off here, just bring it down. There you go, C major chord. That's what's going on right there. Uh-huh, uh-huh, that's my shit. All right, so listen to this. And this is what I wound up doing. I did duplicate, 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 and then I had like different variations of it. So this one was just regular default. This one, I kind of just did purify right there. Oh, I just, yeah, I just colorized it. There you go. Colorizing is basically uh, purify and electrify right there. That sounds a little bit more unique. What I did is I just took the electrify off and I went full purify. And then on this one, full purify, full electrify, bam, bring those down. There you go. Stop all these. Click on shift, go to the end, bam, right click, freeze tracks. Flatten. Go back over here. Over here. Over here, it's a little bit of editing. It's a little bit of editing. Come over here, bam, right click, crop clips. There we go. So now we have pretty much like our ingredients, right? Go over here, open serum. This is what we're gonna do. All right, so we figured out our sample rate, 1455. 1455. Bam. Let's bring one of these babies in. Alright. Here's a little. This is the little transient that comes in. Isn't that dope? That is so dope, right? <laughs> that is so cool. And you could do a couple things with this. Um, what I like to do is shift horizontal, uh, shift horizontal to zero crossing. Do that. All right.
right, then you're gonna have to do some processing. Remove DC offset, and then what you're gonna do is normalize each. See, I like how it's kind of moving, but if you don't like that, you can go to process, set phases, this frame to all. There you go. You can just have the notes right there, but I kind of like a phasey. This is super cool. And then uh, you can morph it. Morphing is whenever I just empties out the empty wave tables and fills it up to 256. So let's do spectral. Yeah, let's do that. see what uh, some other ones are doing. Let's do the full purify. Let's see what happens there. Let's do some processing. Shift horizontal to zero. DC offset, normalize each, morph, spectral. I love it. Ha ha ha. Let's go look at the best one I made. Yeah. I made this one earlier. I'm just kind of doing some simple stuff, but check this out. These are sick. These are some other ones I made. <laughs> this one is super cool. That sounds so cool. Yeah, yeah, so that's how I did some pitch map ones. Uh, let me show you some other presets that I've made. Uh, these are using some other t wave tables that are included into the download links. Check these out. Made this one, this was pretty cool. Sounds like an old Juno, man. I love these pitch map ones I made. Ha! <laughs> Another foghorn. Yeah, so that's it for the presets, guys. Let's um, check out the wavetables. Got some analog stuff. 
Honestly, I was making these and I've, I I wasn't sure whether or not if I've actually, you know, made these or not. These are so old. Uh, they might be like old serum ones. Some old church organ action there. Yeah, you got some old church organ there. And if you don't like the church organ action, then you could just... There you go. Yeah, these wavetables are fun, man. Just... Yeah, man. Oh, and by itself. Now, here is some interesting stuff here. So, what I did is I grabbed basic shapes. And you go over here. I think I got rid of this one. So, I'm going to remove this one. Remove current index. There you go. You go do this. And then what I did is I did a morph spectral. Check this out. This is this was the basic idea of that. It's just doing some really weird morph. So I can just move this knob instead of just picking individual ones. I could do like some cool shit like this. And yeah, this is what this one wound up doing. I forgot what you know. You know, let's see what happens. Isn't that cool? I can just do this for hours, dude. I can just do this for hours. Let's go see, I don't know, let's go make this square or something. There you go, there's something in there. Yeah, this is a square. Yeah, there you go, it's a square now. And then I got this idea from Virtual Riot, which he actually did some things on remap. So if you go over here and you do remap, you can kind of do this, but it does something with the phase. It doesn't really do this particularly, but I thought if one half was a sine wave, the other half could be, I don't know, a square or double triangle. And this is just like another idea that I had just like with the shapes and stuff, you just take one and one phase and then you shape it over there. Now, here's a trick though, whenever you morph it, don't do crossfade, do spectral. You get like some interesting results with spectral. Uh, crossfade, it just kind of, it just, it morphs it into it, but this one. Look, I got a saw, but then it's gonna flip the other way. sound like like it's changing notes but it's really not flips I don't even know what this waveform is but it looks dope look I got a transformer over here uh, these are some one shots I have just some old ones um, I did them just like I did in the first part of the thing these actually sound really good by themselves
Look at that. I took some uh, AU5's um, color base samples. I put them in here. This is like my first idea of having color based wavetables. But it sounds like more lasery than anything. I love that. I love vocoding samples. Vocoding something and putting it in a wavetable is so good. And yeah, so that's the whole download link. Uh, I really hope this kind of opened your eyes to how much fun you can have with wavetables. Uh, get a little experimental with the way that you do your wavetables. If you enjoy this video, hit like, leave a comment. If you don't like Serum and you like Vital, because Vital is dope, it's got some cool things. Maybe I'll do a video on that. Like and comment if you want me to do a video on Vital. And I'm not going to do it if only one person comments, man. I need you guys to comment, like, all this stuff. I love you guys, but come on. Let's have some fun. Let's start a conversation. There's some interesting things in Vital. I prefer, I, I really don't like Vital, honestly, because every time I use it, it, it has CPU issues. There's always a lag. I never, I feel, I, I, I never get it like as crisp as I do in Serum. Serum is just such a robust, good plugin. I think the wavetables are the best. I know Faceplant has some as well. I used to take the wavetables and put them in Faceplant and see if they would work. They do work. I kind of wish they had an editor, a little bit of a better editor. Guys, so whenever I export these wave files, whenever I export these wavetables or saved as a wave file, just go ahead and put it into your folder and it'll work in any VST. So you should be able to put it in Vital if you need to. Just put it in the folder or just export it in. You could do that as well. It'll recognize it because it's just a 32-bit a wave file. And it's like pitched down. It's like a wavetable format. So you should be able to do that. And everything should work. Hey, guys. Thank you for watching. Like and comment.